All right, it's time for something we haven't had in a while. A battery acquisition with video. So, these are four Sun and Shine E612 slash 100 uh, 12 volt gel blocks. And these are pretty interesting, uh, in part because uh, obviously they're Sun and Shine gel bo blocks and my favorite batteries ever. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, as of shooting this, it's 2021. Uh, these were acquired and installed in 2014 and taken out of service in 2017 uh, due to systems upgrades. And these were made redundant. Uh, they sat on a shelf uh, being just uh, uh, spare batteries in case the new system failed, uh, but they never saw any use. And uh, now they're old enough to just uh, uh, not be useful anymore. They don't need the spares because uh, the new system is uh, highly redundant and it's proven itself to be uh, reliable and uh, uh, safe to run. So the facility had no need for them anymore. I went and picked them up and uh, now we're gonna be running uh, a capacity test on Big Berth over there. So I know these batteries have been reasonably well ma maintained. They've been charged at least once a year sometimes a couple times a year, although over the last few years they might have not really been doing their due diligence on that, so they've probably been sitting around kind of half-charged-ish for a while. Uh, when I got them they had uh, just been just thrown on a 48 volt uh, charger, charged in series uh, for over a weekend, so they were fully charged when I got them. I don't know the state of charge uh, prior to that. Uh, the technician said it was, you know, not much below 12.6 per, per block, but there was probably at least one which was below 12.6, which isn't bad. Uh, sun and shine gel blocks, they tend to take uh, cold storage without a charger really, really well. And even if they sit around half charge for a while, uh, they tend to make it out uh, quite well. Now, the 12 volt blocks in the A600 series uh, are kind of notorious for leaking. I've seen it uh, many times with these, and uh, these are no exception. I have now cleaned these up, but in particular, uh, number two here uh, has a decent amount of leakage around uh, the positive uh, uh, terminal. When I was uh, lifting it up, it was just a big mess here. And uh, due to positive plate expansion, uh, some of these are actually known to crack open the cases when they get old. If they don't have the fancy sun and shine uh, terminals uh, that I have on my big fancy two volt uh, cells. Uh, so there's really no uh, place for the terminal to go uh, when it starts expanding with age. Uh, this seems to be a bigger problem with cycles than uh, with uh, standby use. So we're gonna see if these guys are just gonna <laughs> crack open uh, if I put them in service and uh, uh, if, if they are in useful shape. Uh, so we've got everything rigged up for a test. I just calibrated Big Bertha there. Five, six years without calibration of a poor girl was way out of whack in the voltage measurement. Uh, so we're good to go. I have uh, charged them overnight at a reasonably high float voltage. Uh, put, took them up to 14.6 uh, volts for a few hours just because they've been sitting. These guys don't really like overcharging, but uh, I, I make my own rules with that. Uh, and now they're sitting at about 14 volts at half an amp, uh, which is really an okay uh, float uh, current for these. I don't mind that at all. So I'm quite confident they're fully charged now. Uh, so I'm just going to set up Big Bertha here. On the management PC, make sure all the channels are set up for 12 volt testing. God knows what I've been running on this thing. And uh, then we're just going to be uh, sitting around and seeing what the results are. I think I actually have tested these guys before, uh, years ago, when I was on that site. So we might dig up the data for that and see how they've aged, if I still have it. Alright, I've fetched my big folder of A600 data sheets. And uh, while these are a series between the two generations of data sheets I have, uh, I think they're going to be uh, quite uh, well uh, similar to the, this particular model here. Uh, Sun and Shine keep changing their specs every few years uh, as uh, their technology improves. Yes, let us say technology is still improving. Uh, so to get a good, easy test that's uh, easy to compare to the data sheet, uh, my tester does 10.0 uh, amps. So I've been uh, scouring this uh, uh, data sheet to see 
uh, what kind of uh, discharge end voltage and current I can do to get as close to 10 amps discharge as possible. Uh, so we can easily compare to this chart where we lie. Uh, and we can see at this uh, 1.87 volts per cell discharge, uh, we can do 8 hours at 10.1 amps. Uh, so I'm going to do a discharge to 1.87 which is 11.22 volts uh, per block, which is a relatively shallow discharge. Uh, but that's going to make it easy to just uh, calculate our uh, percentage of remaining capacity in these batteries. Uh, I did even find the old tests I've done on these in the past. Now, they actually performed very poorly back then. Uh, here's the data from that. And uh, we have uh, one at 76 amp hours, one at 64, one at... Uh, 83 and 160, yeah, oh, but I don't uh, recall what settings I actually used for that. So whether or not that's uh, representative uh, of any real capacity according to spec is, uh, it's unknown, but the, the fact that we were all tested of the same settings and they had about 20 amperes of var variation between them is not a good sign. So we're probably going to have a bit of a battery restoration project on our hands with these. Uh, we're probably going to have to cycle them a few times, balance them, uh, abuse them, and uh, see if we can nudge a bit more capacitive and bat out of them. I'm really concerned about number three here, 64 amperes, and he's number number two as well, 60 amperes. That's 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 a decent derating from you. But I have configured the tester. We've got our uh, current uh, voltage limit and our current set. So. It's just a question of pressing the big red buttons. And now we are testing. So, now we just wait and see what these old, pe what these old guys can tell us. The fans have stopped and we have some results. So, uh, before we get to that, I took a look at the batteries uh, and uh, I noticed one of, the guy, one of them was uh, kind of leaking from this strange white cap that uh, is uh, right there by the terminal. So I popped the cap off, it was really loose and it seems it's just uh, a part of a positive terminal that you can uh, access from there. I'm not sure why you can do that, perhaps they share the same uh, positive uh, terminal for several different models. A battery, and this could be for some kind of golf cart battery or something. Uh, but uh, I don't need those, so on the on the leaky battery, I just uh, took some uh, plastic filler and uh, filled uh, the entire thing in. Lights, please. Uh, or for the negative side of that battery, I put some uh, dielectric grease just in there. It was kind of showing some hints of starting to leak but it wasn't quite doing it yet so yeah, we're gonna have to see as the years go by uh, if uh, the grease terminal or the uh, plastic filler terminal is going to do better. Uh, I have no idea how well this plastic filler is actually going to handle the presence of uh, sulfuric acid. They tend to be quite good with the camera systems but you never know it's like a window sealant, casco window sealant of some, of some description there just bog standard plastic filler. Uh, the other ones are fine with the caps, so I'm not going to touch them. You can see how there's some kind of gr uh, greasy like uh, gasket type material there which uh, probably fails with uh, positive plate growth. Uh, it was curious, you can't see it now because I filled it up with plastic, but uh, the uh, terminal had turned from lead colored to brown, <laughs> which is what happens when you get uh, sulfuric acid on the lead, so it, it had basically just turned into positive plate. But never mind that, let's get to the results, which are not too uh, good, because we have about 60 amp hours per block. The best one just clicked off at 73, the worst one 60.85, so that's uh, about 70% capacity or so. I have yet to do the math, but um, they should be performing better. Or should they? Now, here we have the almighty data sheet at hand. And we need to remember, 
but we're doing a rather shallow discharge. So while it's tempting to think of these batteries as uh, 100 amp hour batteries, uh, we are not actually testing for 100 amp hours. We're doing a 1.87 volts per cell discharge at uh, 10 amps for an eight hour runtime, but 10.1 uh, times eight, well, that's not 100 amp hours, that's 80.8 amp hours. So our 100 amp hour batteries are actually 80.8 amp hours when they're new at 20 degrees Celsius. Now we are not running them at 20 degrees Celsius, it's rather colder here. So I took a temperature check, they're at 15 degrees C. The D rating for that means that we have about 95% available capacity. So that means that the 80.8 amp hour figure goes down to 76.76 amp hours. So a brand new battery in this condition would only give us 76.76 amp hours. And that suddenly completely changes our capacity uh, or rather state of health calculations. Uh, and suddenly they're not so bad after all. Uh, the best one came in at 96% uh, capacity. The worst one came in at 79. And s <laughs> that's a very different way of looking at 60 amp hours out of a 100 amp hour battery. So uh, that's basically just fine. I'm going to give them a couple of cycles for all of these three, uh, which are in the 60s. I think a few cycles and a few heavy balance charging uh, operations is going to gain them a few amp hours. So I'm going to do that. For 73 amp hour one, I think that guy's just good to go, to be frank. He seems absolutely happy. You can't complain that uh, about 96% capacity after seven eight years of sitting in storage and use. You, you just can't. So, well, that looked bad from the start. It's not so bad after all. So let's uh, let them charge overnight. It's gonna take a while. We have 400 amp hours to charge right now and only one rather dinky charger. Uh, and uh, then we'll go on to do a few more cycles and see where we end up. And uh, for your satisfaction, let's just do that. Ah. Beautiful. Ah, yes. Squeeze that grease. All right, so we're now charging yet again because I've done another cycle on the batteries. Uh, so uh, what I did prior to that was do uh, a bit of a dirty trick that I uh, have figured out. Uh, about uh, these uh, gel batteries, and that is uh, doing a uh, an equalizing charge according to the specification for the A600 uh, solar batteries. Uh, you can find it in the uh, Sonnenschein Gel Handbook Part 2 from 2012. Uh, you don't actually get a specification for how to really equalize these normal A600 cells, uh, or, or, or blocks in this case. Uh, but you do get a specification for the Solar variant. Now the Solar variant has a slightly different uh, chemistry. They use, uh, phos uh, I think it's phosphoric acid uh, to improve uh, uh, cycle performance uh, and sacrificing longevity for that. Uh, but since they are made specifically for cyclic applications, uh, they are specified for better they are specified better with regards to uh, cell balancing and uh, non-standby use. And the specification for balancing or equalizing these is to feed uh, 1.2 amps per 100 amp hours rated C10 capacity uh, into the cells for four hours, regardless of uh, your cell voltage. You don't have uh, a compliance voltage set on your Power supply, you just keep pumping 1.2 amps per 100 rated amp hours. Since we have uh, 91 amp hours rated on this, uh, it's, it comes up to pretty much spot on one amp per battery. Uh, so I just hooked them up in parallel and uh, pumped four amps into them. They nicely distributed the current between them uh, and let them sit for a few hours. Uh, the cell voltage just got up to like 50. Uh, the, uh, 
block voltage has got up to about 15.5 volts at the peak, uh, but uh, that's uh, acceptable. There, there, there is no higher voltage limit in the data sheets. Granted, that's for the solar variant, but you know, it, it obviously works on these, and I'll be able to tell you why. Uh, it's uh, something I noticed when I was doing work on the big cells uh, uh, previously, because on one of the big cells which was performing poorly, I accidentally left it uh, overcharging overnight and it reached a voltage of something like 2.7 volts before I uh, caught it and uh, uh, remedied the situation. And that cell did gained like a ridiculous amount of amp hours from being so extraordinarily overcharged and it basically fixed the cell. Uh, so I'm expecting good results from doing a similar although more uh, controlled treatment of these guys. So uh, we have done another cycle and the, these are the results we have. So if you'll pardon my lack of an <laughs> actual spreadsheet program, Notepad will have to do. So we have our specification and the test data here. Uh, and uh, we are going for 76.76 amp hours. Uh, and uh, you can see battery number one here, uh, it's uh, performing uh, way over spec. It's actually uh, at 101% capacity, so that guy is perfectly fine. But the other ones are uh, kind of struggling. But the interesting thing is we saw a rather uniform, roughly 5% capacity gain across all cells from doing the uh, uh, equalizing charge. And that's a good sign because that means they've all been through roughly the same stuff and they're going to be responding roughly the same uh, to further treatments. Now cell number one here, that, that guy's done. I'm happy <laughs> with 100% capacity. I don't expect to get more than that. Uh, but I think uh, I might give these three guys another equalizing charge. Uh, now I don't think I'm going to do another uh, cycle because that's just going to be putting undue stress on the cells. If I do another equalizing charge, I think that's going to bring all of these uh, up into the uh, over 90% uh, range as far as capacity goes, and that's good enough for me. Uh, there's no point doing a cycle just to confirm that because it's, it's going to be the equalizing charge that actually gains us the capacity, not the cycle in this case. So uh, that's more or less it. Uh, for uh, this battery acquisition video. There's a, a nice discharge graph over uh, the weakest of the cells and you can see it's lovely uh, and linear. Uh, if you have uh, in the end here, if you get like little humps where it pops out, uh, that's uh, uh, indicative of uh, a, a bad cell that's weaker than the other, that's just dropping down suddenly. But we have a nice smooth and clear graph uh, for all of them. Uh, and that's just uh, absolutely what you want to see. Uh, so yeah, I think we can say with confidence that the sun and shine, as always, are living up to their specs. And uh, these batteries, although they've been in use for a couple of years and been sitting for many more years, are going to be performing absolutely fine. And I'm going to be probably just hooking them up in parallel with all the other batteries in the system. We actually have My old, old, old 300 amp hours uh, A600s here as well, uh, already sitting in the system. These guys are miraculous. They are from 2007, so they are uh, closing on on 15 years old, and uh, they're, they're still very close to the rated capacity, and uh, I think one or two still exceed uh, the rated capacity. I have them hooked up with a long cord to the big uh, DC central there. So I'm super happy to get those guys over there because they are also the same A600 series. So I'm not having to mix and match batteries. We have A600, A600 and wherever on earth I'm going to fit the 100 amp hour cells. They're also going to be A600 with the same specs and everything's going to be beautiful. So there you go. More A600s. I love my A600s. Cheerio.